Hello everyone, welcome to the Fire Carry Guide. Today we're going to talk about more premium carriers and our second installment we're going to talk about the Saipan. Now we've already done the Kaga and if you haven't seen that go check that out and for the most part we've also done all the uh, recent reworked American and Japanese carriers uh, with playlists of their own showing um, you know module setups, captain builds, exteriors and kind of random play style so that's no different than what we're going to do today so let's go straight into it. Here is our Saipan. Now the Saipan is an American tier 7 carrier if you are not aware of anything of how uh, the things are in the game at the moment. Premium carrier as we say. The ship is uh, unique in that it is the first of the premium carriers and it is the only carrier in the game that uses upped tier planes. Lots of planes, lots of carriers use down tier planes so like the hull is tier 7 and the planes are down tier which means they're like tier 6 for example whereas the Saipan um, has a much smaller uh, wave size compared to the American counterparts which are usually 6 or 7 for example but the Saipan has 3s and 4s but its planes are up tier from 7 to tier 9 so it gives it a lot of unique traits and a lot of advantages and we'll get all into all of that as we move along. So first things first, module upgrades same thing as we did with the Kaga and anything else at tier 7 the Saipan is very good at air control and as because it's really good at air control we definitely want to buff up the damage of our guns we want to buff up the health of our fighters and the ammunition as well there's so much ammunition on the Saipan having more ammunition is very helpful because of the strafes and that is the you could call it the gimmick or the key or the signing agreement to the get out of jail card for the Saipan which we'll come to in a moment but lots of strafes is good because we're in the tier 7 bracket and there's nothing really else that we want to pick, we want to take damage mitigation upgrades, so we're going to take damage control system modification 1, reduces the chance we get in fire and put in flood, and we also want to take damage control system modification 2, which reduces the time we are on fire and flooding, but if you're on flooding you're probably going to use your damage control party. For tier 7 I would recommend da taking damage control party 2 because it is possible, even with the 30 second immunity of fire flooding when it's active, um, that carry sniping is a real thing and you definitely want a premium version of this. In terms of uh, what are the planes in the flight control modules, well, we have tier 9 fighters uh, in groups of 3, but with air supremacy and the captain skill, that'll be up to 4. We have torpedo bombers and dive bombers, but we don't get to use both at the same time. So we got tier 9 torpedo bombers, and we have tier 9 dive bombers, which are high explosives. Not armor piercing, there's no armor piercing on this um, carrier, it's just, a, uh, just HE. Now, the two flight control modules. The flight mod 1 is 3 fighter planes and 1 dive bomber. Now that is, if you were to go back to my old adage of uh, carriers, like kind of like a triangle. You have, um, at the top you've got air control, then over here you've got uh, bombing capability, and then the third option over here you have um, scouting and, and support role. The fighter is off the chart. At, at tier 7, 3 fighters that are tier 9, they're fast, they've got lots of ammunition, they have really powerful strafes. The key thing about the fighter planes for the Saipan is that when you strafe, that's fine, it's powerful, right? No, no different to anyone else. However, when you clip on an enemy plane, so you're engaged, and then you are exit strafing away from another plane, the exit strafe, every other carrier and every other nation will lose a plane. That's just an automatic price you have to pay. You lose a plane unless you've only got one plane in the wave and then you're not allowed to exit strafe. Saipan doesn't have that. Saipan does not lose a plane from exit strafe. So it's very forgiving to new players. If you strafe in and you get clipped and you're, you're over um, hostile AA and you're like, well, if I exit strafe, I'll lose a plane and then all that type of stuff. Not in the Saipan. Exit strafe immediately and you get out of jail card. Or you can exit strafe onto more enemy planes and do damage. It's extremely exploitable by well, uh, good players. <laughs> to the point where it's it's definitely considered OP. There's many calls for it to be changed, but that's not in the remit of this video. So, three fighter planes means you have insane levels of air control, but what about offensive capability? Well, one dive bomber. Now, the key thing here is the dive bomber is actually quite large. Uh, the dive bomber is nine planes, uh, it, but it still has the large drop reticle of high explosive American dive bombers. What does this mean? It's very RNG. You can hit one ship hard and cause fire, but you don't have multiple sources of fire or multiple sources of flooding. Your alpha strike's not going to kill anybody. So the best thing that we have seen this dive bomber used for is actually destroyers. If you use the dive bomber on a destroyer, either by manual or clicking on it, you're rolling RNG, which I hate when it comes to carriers, and you'll either not hit the destroyer, more times than not, or, or you'll hit the destroyer, just boom, dead. Or you'll obliterate nine-tenths of his health. Just a couple of bomb hits on the destroyer because there's nine of them, there's more chances of you hitting them, boom, he just gets wrecked. 
and that's really frustrating for the destroyer and is really frustrating for another carrier. It's because you're rolling a dice here on, on the hitting of these bombers. There's no accuracy involved. It's I do not like this 301 setup. Even if it was like ranked competitive, I don't like this particular setup because of the, the you only have one bomber that's massive and that's RNG related. So what's the other option? Well, we've got the mod one uh, here, the Mark Eight mod one. This is two fighter planes and two torpedo bomber waves. Now the fighter uh, plane waves are the same as, as the three fighter waves, so you've got three planes by default and with their supremacy and the captain, which we'll get to in a moment, that goes up to four, so that's fine. Two fire plane waves means we can deal with Kagas, we can deal with Hiryu's, and we can easily deal with uh, the Ranger now that it only has one fire plane, uh, right? So that's fine. The two torpedo bomb waves, they're groups of three, so you know, we have to be careful with our planes. You know, if we, if we lose one plane, then we're losing a lot of our strike capability, but it's still six torpedo bombers, uh, but the planes are fast, and they're tanky, and we can do a lot of damage. Now, it's very hard to hit destroyers with the Saipan's torpedo bombers because of the narrower gauge that we drop the three torpedoes, but this is a very good ship for going after cruisers and battleships, and also enemy carriers. But you don't have the same strike capability as the Kaga or as the Hero. You don't have the ability to damage and bleed over time, but you are really good at hitting Alpha and getting in through there. The fighters are very powerful, good air control, and you're looking basically to dominate the map. Uh, you, you have the best, unless the enemy here you for example has three fighter planes or there's a saipan with three fighter planes or there's a double carrier game and you're at numbered foot wise you still aren't at a disadvantage because you use the party trick of the saipan the extra strafing the strafing mechanics and you can get a lot of work done so that's kind of about that we'll talk about now the exteriors and then we'll go to captain skills so pick yourself camouflage that you like uh put your first flag as we're doing so uh signal wise I, because it's still tier 7, because we still are in the realm of sniping, I still take the AA signal until we get tier 8 defensive fire, so we're taking the AA signal. I like the speeds because I like to try and run away. The, the maneuverability is 34.6 knots with the speed signal, that's kind of great. And then I like, because we only have torpedo bombers, I like taking the flooding chance. I want to increase the chance that I can get a flooding which either forces the ship that I damage if he survives to use a damage control party, or if he's already used it earlier because he was in fire or in some other type of thing, we can flood him and we can bleed him out if we don't kill him with all our planes. After that, it's selective how you want to go. I'm taking like an economic signal because I have a 19 point captain just to get some little bit more experience. I could drop the speed and I could trick, you know, more special camouflages to get, you know, free experience or captain experience. That's all personal preference, as it were. Um, it's all up to you. The um, camouflage wise, I think I'm just going to take some free experience. No, some captain experience. Yeah, so I'll change, I'll change it from the standard camo to something else. And that's me good to go. Now, in terms of captain skills, because this is a premium captain, and we don't necessarily have dedicated captains for premium ships, we have them on other carriers. In this instance, I have my Essex captain. Now, one thing to know about the hangar capacity, and we'll go on a bunch of things here, is that it's only 48 units. The Kaga and the Hiryu and all that type of stuff typically have 72. And the Kaga's actually got more at 85, so that's actually pretty good. I forgot to mention that for the Kaga. But so if the hear you and the ranger have 72 and the kaga saipan only has 48 isn't that bad well no because you have to take this with a pinch of salt the plane waves are smaller and you don't have like a third plane class on on the saipan so for example you've got fire torpedo bombers or you've got fighter dive bombers you don't have all three which means you don't need to then have extra reserves for that third plane class so and also because the waves are smaller the number of actual waves that you get to send out is more Where, whereas in the tier sevens you you get three waves for the japanese and the americans for the here you and the ranger the saipan you'll find that you can get four or five waves even though you've only got four eight planes so it's actually very good for kind of um how should i put this endurance in the game one of the other elements, though, is that in terms of self-defense, the Saipan does not have long-range caliber AA guns. It only has mid-tier. It's got a lot of both ears, but they're only mid-tier. It doesn't have long-range, so it doesn't have that kind of uh, long-range killing capability that, say, for example, the Japanese ones do. So, when it comes to my um, Essex captain, we have a slightly different build setup here. I'll just ship parameters. I see the sun is beginning to come around the corner. You can see this little thing. Right, so, stay up. Aircraft servicing expert. We want this for the plane health. They're already tanky. More tankiness is great. And the servicing time is better than anything else. We take in torpedo acceleration. I just find it better to going after targets with multiple torpedo bomber waves. It makes it easier going after destroyers if I have to go after destroyers. You alternatively, I don't really see there being another option in this setup. You could, If you didn't take torpedo acceleration, then the next best thing is maybe a drone rush. Your, your planes are so fast that you don't really need expert rear gunner because you can fly around the enemy fighters almost even with the bomb load because they're just the disparity in speed is quite high. 
I like the, the torpedo armament expertise. This means I can turn around the planes, i.e. the only torpedo bombers as fast as possible to strike as much as I possibly can. And then the fourth uh, point is we take air supremacy. We want to buff up those two fires from groups of three to groups of four. This is more poignant on the Saipan than any other car because from going from three planes to four planes is a you can argue it's a 33 or 25 percent depending how you look at it from a loss or gain uh, damage increase right that's huge uh output in strafing damage output increase so if you had four planes and you lose a plane you're losing 25 percent of your damage and if you have you know three planes and you gain another plane you could argue this you know an increase and then 25 percent and then you've got all this damage and my math is terrible don't go me into this but the point is the extra plane is an extra big wallop of damage when it comes to the strafing and that's uh, that's what we're after uh, and then it's also, if you need to skip with it, it's kind of tanky and, you know, extra planes useful. And the dive bomber, it doesn't matter because we're not using the dive bomber setup. If you were using the fighter dive bomber setup, then yeah, sure, you get an extra dive bomber and it goes up to nine dive bombs and it's, it's ludicrous. For the 11th point, we take dogfighting expert. This is just more ammunition. We're not going to come across anything that's higher tier than us. We're taking for ammunition. Um, this can you don't need to pick this as your 11 point skill. You can actually go do other stuff first, but that's just the way how I'm, I'm going through the, the listing. Now, what do we pick after 11? Well, the thing is, do we need concealment expert? Well, we're on 11.9. We don't really need it. We can do something better here. I feel that given the side pan, and if there is an opportunity where you are vulnerable, maybe your fire planes are out of ammunition or you're caught off guard and you're in the wrong place, you still need to be able to defend yourself and you don't have the long range caliber guns. So in this scenario, I take advanced fire training because I want to push the limited range of the Bofors up to 4.2 kilometers. I need to push this mid range AA as high as I possibly can. Okay, so that's one. And then after that, well, I'm going to take basic fire training as well. So that bumps the damage of them up. So now I'm up to 18 points and I've got one point left over, what do I do? Well, priority target is the least useless skill. It tells me when a match is being targeted. Now, theoretically, I could drop priority target and I could drop dogfighting expert and I could take something like Adrenal Rush, as an example. What does I get out of that? Well, it means if I take damage, my planes turn around faster. That's true. But typically, the Saipan's fire planes can loiter because they've got so much uh, ammo that you don't typically recycle them that quickly and the Adrenal Rush is not going to help them. So that helps the torpedo bombers, I guess. But what do I lose? Well, I lose knowing when I'm not only when I'm targeted, but you know how many people are looking at me when I'm spotted, and I also lose more importantly 10% ammo. And I think that 10% ammo for the extra strafing is more important than say the adrenaline rush. Personal preference here. Now you can drop the basic fire training, and you can drop the priority target. Just keep the range, and you can take concealment expert and drop your concealment from 11.9 down to something better. That is entirely possible, but. The Saipan has really fast fighter planes, which means you can be further back and you can fire the planes out uh, in pretty much the same time as a carrier that's more stealthy with slower planes, like the Kaga, for example. So that's personal preference. Uh, just before we go into a random battle, as a note, the in terms of competitive, there isn't really a, uh, a tier um, 7 competitive scene. However, you would probably find that the... 301 carrier would be used in competitive and why was this because you want air control with the fighters and then the dive bomber can be used in the scouting role because it's quick and it's higher tier than anything else but also you can use it to attack the destroyers the enemy team's destroyers any destroyer that goes for a cap is slightly outside the NAA you're rolling a bit of RNG you're trying to hit them you're trying to do some damage even just a little bit of damage on a destroyer is enough so that if your DD come across their DD that health imbalance means that you would win the duel. And it's that and that one super fighter, super dive bomber, is very difficult for the enemy car to deal with with your fighters and overlapping AA bubbles. So you just kind of go in, plop, run away. Because the fight, the destroyer, is usually on the front line of your of the enemy team and, and he's the easiest to hit. And even in ranked, although I personally probably wouldn't use the Saipan in ranked, the, you would probably find that the 301 would be quite successful because the three fighters gives you tons of air control, strafing, exit strafing, compared to say a three fighter hear you. But more so than that, that one dive bomber is going to go after the enemy destroyer every time. And because the game revolves around cap points, slamming that dive, that destroyer, lowering his health, preventing him from capping, or just killing him outright if he's already kind of wounded and just rolling that dice, it's huge. Because as the hear you player, for example, or an enemy side pan, it's very difficult to stop that dive bomber if you're inside your AA bubble and the enemy DDs and say, like, you know, your ship's AA bubble or he's kind of exposed and you can use your fire to protect. You're only just clicking on, you're just clicking on it. It's not like a maneuvering of torpedo bombers and dropping. It's just click, boom, and it's like roll the dice, see what happens. Uh, if you, Maybe you hit with everything, maybe you don't hit with anything. But if you do hit and you do a lot of damage, hey presto. 
or if you don't, just go back and do it again. And if you cripple off the destroyer, then your team can then carry the game and do other sort of stuff. But the catch is, if you do kill the destroyer, but it doesn't matter because your team plays poorly, you cannot then go kill battleships. You cannot then go kill cruisers effectively. You can, and they hear you, for example, it's balanced 2 2 2. And that's one of the cruxes of the siphon. That's why I prefer the 2 2 siphon more than anything else. So, enough waffling, let's go into a random battle. So, we are looking to. Go into a battle and we're looking to maximize the effectiveness of our uh, fighter planes. We are not only going to be protecting our bombers, we're going to be looking to lock out the enemy CV. We don't want them getting anywhere near our, our you know, d destroyers and the cat points. We don't want them getting anywhere near uh, bombing or anything like that. And our planes are fast so we can get to where we need to go. And then with our torpedo bombers, we're looking for anything that's kind of vaguely isolated and then we can attack them. And because we've got up tier planes, we're actually not that badly affected by when we get up tiered. You know when people come against us so a ranger that suits us just fine ranger is probably the weaker of the tier 7 carriers we are up tier into tier 8s it doesn't matter too much because we've got better tankier planes uh bismarck turbots can have good a but there's a division here so i want to make sure they're not all together nagato new mexico easy targets uh edinburgh we probably can't kill but he doesn't have defense fire so we can go after him the remaining cruisers leander doesn't have defense there destroyers harder to hit but we could go after them, but I, I prefer not to because I kind of feel like I'll waste a wave if I miss them and I don't touch them. Because it still usually takes two torps to kill them off unless they're wounded. <clears throat> uh, I don't have to look on like a friendly AA on my team to fall back upon because that's not really necessary uh, because we should be able to win the air battle uh, you know, in the open seas. So our two DDs are south, so we're probably going to be focusing on an AB. So I'm going to turn the ship and go down uh, closer to the team down here. I think I will, because I don't know what the, the composition is and where people are, I'll do fighters first, primarily to uh, give my destroyers who go for the caps uh, a bit of air cover at the beginning. I don't want them getting like spotted by like the carrier who fires like a, um, a torpedo bomber first out and just spots them and everyone shoots them. So I'm just going like, to give them a little bit of cover first, and then we'll do torpedo bombers. Now, when it comes to carrier sniping, the hit side pan, ca the, when you come, for example, carrier snipe, let's see the ranger exposes himself, similar to what happened in the previous Kaga video, right? The side pan doesn't have the same strike capability as the Kaga, which means we would need all six torpedo bombers to land, and that's quite tricky. Normally, you can only get five, because the AE kills one plane or you miss with one torp, uh, because the drop pattern, it, the, 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 the ranger has to go in the right angle for you to do the right drop. It's, it's quite difficult to uh, drop him perfectly. So killing off the ranger is only really good if he's slightly wounded. Uh, it's, it's, it's not the best technique because if, if you kill 99% of the health of the ranger but he's still flying planes and still being effective, then it's kind of a waste of drop. Now you have to send a second drop after the ranger and would it not have been better to attack two other targets, you know, to help your team out rather than that? Hmm. See the team must go north. All right, so we'll go spot you over there. Plane's a little bit tankier, but I'm watching for any form of I'm under attack or any flickering to say that I'm being engaged by A. Right, so I'm looking at the top. I see an Agato and I see the Edinburgh. Edinburgh's probably the one doing the cap, so I'll keep him kind of spotted from a distance. I'll keep the other fighter here with the Kiev. I'll keep this fighter plane here. I'm looking to attack the Nagato and just kind of going in. It really depends if there's a defense fire or any other ships near him, but it doesn't look like it. The Edinburgh could mess with my planes, but I'm just going to hit the Nagato straight up and turn the planes around. I'll move the carrier up. Ooh, this is a debate. I think I'm faster than him. Yeah. I only get one chance here. I'm not going to be able to like make it all fancy. Like I'm not going to be able to maximize the... Am I clicking with the nose? No. So I'm using my speed here to fly away from this guy. And then uh, he can't really strafe me. He's trying to click on them, but I'm, out, I'm out basically faster, especially with the bomb dropping down. And if he's still clipping on them, I'm going to lure him over the Sharn Horse and I'm going to strafe him as well. I don't think he's really paying attention, which is a shame. In fact, I'll move the torpedo bomb over here so he kind of flies inside the... No? Alright. 
fine. I was a little bit too far away for that technique to work. Oh, we caught him in the strafe. Well, you tried to... I, I, I don't get that. That was really poor. Now, you could argue that he's luring me away so he could bomb the battleship, and maybe I should have gone after the bombers first, and maybe I was blinded by killing off his fire plane. This is a valid argument. Um, but we're going to send the fires back now. We got rid of one of his fire planes. He's going to be on a long cooldown. Uh, we wounded the Nagato, did 20k, got a flooding in. No, we didn't get a flooding in. Oh, well, three torps. Okay. We'll get the torpedoes turned around as quick as we can. In terms of plane reserves, uh, it's six planes on the takeoff, so we've got six that we're taking off now. Then we have another two waves on top of that to get up to 12, and then three of and stuff. So we've got like two and a half on top of that. So there's actually a lot of plane waves. Cause a panic effect, fly away, cause a strafe, because otherwise I don't really want him, his rear gunners to kill any of my planes. And I've got a lot of ammunition when it comes to strafing. Ah, but well we got clipped by Edinburgh AA. So I might actually call that fire plane back just to get fresh ammunition, get a plane up to size. Uh, in terms of targets, we could go after the Edinburgh, but I think he's going to get slammed by our whole team here. The New Mexico seems like it's vulnerable. Shores might have a defense fire, so we're really interested in him. I want to see where the Ranger is, see when he's taking his planes off, so I can engage him that way. Just see if he can't spawn. And there's a big gap, and if I was a different carrier, I could maybe go after the Ranger and kill him, but not interested in that. What I'm interested in now is maybe hitting this New Mexico and then kind of stalling the B cap. Yeah, so the other going to die, and the Shores is kind of engaged, so we don't have to worry too much about that. Now, the reason I'm going up and around is I don't want to fly into the nose of the New Mexico. I want to come outside of his long range AA and then come at him from the side. That's the best possible kind of approach I have. So, see his fire plane's taken off. I'll bring up my second fire plane. I don't really want to engage him until I have my second fire plane. So now here he is and I'm approaching him from the side. This is the best way because if he turns, I don't have to fly all the way around. I've got a slight arc. So see how he's turning? I'm anticipating this. I can just do a little arc and then drop in from this direction. Okay. And then I do shift F just so they don't fly around and then go back, they just immediately go back. So the t because of his speed and his size, because he's stubbier, I four torps is a good connection. Alright. Not really looking to engage the fighter right now. The simple fact is his wave of seven at tier seven will beat my wave of uh, tier nine at four. But if I get the second fire wave up, then we're fine. So, one of the strengths, and I'll show this as soon as I have the second fire here, kind of the party trick as it were, is if you've got two waves and he's got one, or even if he's got two waves but they're separate, well, I'm going to engage on him, then I'm going to exit strafe, and I'm going to strafe the other one. See the exit strafe? Didn't lose a plane, I'm able to disengage, he's not paying attention so he doesn't move his fighter, so then I'm able to click on him, and then we're going to do the, the same process all over again. Exit strafe strafe on top with the second fire wave, kills his planes off. I don't lose a plane, I'm expending ammunition, but otherwise, nothing else. And that is why the side plan is so powerful, because you are able to do this maneuvering technique without losing planes. I should be down to half a wave here and have to recycle this plane wave, but I don't. I got enough ammunition to do another good strafe, and then it's going to be empty, and the other fire plane wave, I've still got about two or three strafes left in it. And that's with all the kind of extra multipliers, you know, the, the dogfighting expert and the module that gives 50%. So that's why those things are very helpful, because it just keeps me in the battle. Now, the Ranger will have probably taken off bombers. Where's my team? All in this general area. In fact, he just killed our Fuso. I don't even know where that was. So I'm looking for his uh, bombers, torpedo bombers, because we were talking and I was paying attention to the Ranger. I really should be locking him out here, but we're not. Uh, there's a lot of ships down the center of the bomb. They're kind of the division group of three tier eights. That would be quite tricky because they could all focus AA on us. I think we're going to try and scout anything that's on the south of B. And we'll look to see where the Ranger is and see if we can put any other you know, uh, planes he's got sending around. We'll also at this time go around and join our team from the back. Okay. Uh, it's possible that the Tago doesn't have a defensive fire. We could also go for the Kagro. So there's another. That's the last of the Ranger's fighters. Oh, there he is. There's some dive bombers, so we'll go after those and keep him here so he doesn't interfere with us. His catapult plane is landing. We'll see if the Tagos got a defensive fire or not. See, he, he's stuck with the island. He has, to, he has to go in a certain direction. 
he's trying to turn back in. So I'm gonna no, he's turning around. He's he's, he's wiggling. Now I can't drop because of this island here, but it's okay because he's taking a hit and he's gonna get slammed because he's he's going through this gap. He has no other option where he can go. He has to like fly in this particular uh, sail in this particular area. So we've got him. And then the Kagro is also stuck. I think he might actually die to the straw torp, so I don't want to bother. Yeah. And there's a dive bomber. We'll go after him. We'll keep the ranger spotted. See if we can intercept the dive bomb. Now the speed differential means we might not catch him before he hits the Maggie. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Who are you going after? Go. Got him. So that's just the tier nine plane speed able to you know catch up. We want you know normal if, if that was if we weren't using the side pan we wouldn't be able to have Kelton there. And he would might be able to get a drop off. Here is a it's not the best angle to engage that will try it like this. Oh, it turns around. We got a couple of clips in AA was also helpful there. Cool. So the one group will turn back and get some ammunition. We'll keep the two group out just in case it's like anything else. We'll get the three and the four group up. And the best thing the enemy team can do is clump up like this. When they're clumped up like this, the overlapping AA uh, is pretty brutal when it comes to killing off planes. Now, even though they're tier nines, I've already lost a plane, so I'm down to five. And every time you lose a plane on the side pan, it's a big damage drop. It's not like you've got like six or seven planes and you lose one. Oh well, percentage-wise, the wave isn't that badly affected. No, it's it's pretty huge. So we strafe this plane wave, now we'll send that fire back because he's got no ammunition. We've got two torpedo bombers. What's the best approach here? Now if we go from this side, he'll get to the island and he'll be blocked. If we go from this side, we have to go further back and hit the Bismarck from behind. But we want to hit the Tirpitz because he's the lowest health, so we can pray to kill him off. The thing is, we'd have to enter the mid-range AA of both of these ships. The Amagi is actually quite far behind, and we can attack him it's relatively unlisted, but our team is suffering here, so we really want to help out here. We don't want to go for like the Amagi, who's not gonna he's not gonna die from our torpedo bombers, he's got pretty good bullet protection. So we're probably gonna go for this turpets. So I'll try and stay outside the mid-range AA, because I know I'm in the long range. And our ship is also perhaps a bit too close to the front line. So now we now we're actually doing this at self-preservation. Those are good destroyer torps, they might kill the Bismarck, so we'll go after the turpets here. He's not going particularly fast. Hopefully this kills him off. It's three torps. He's not going quick enough to eat the front one. Ooh, just the flooding. But has he got damage control party? And this is kind of the awkward problem. We're now reliant on our... We'll move forward to the islands. We can't see as well. We're <laughs> somewhat reliant on our uh, battleship to finish him off. And I will cancel that plane takeoff by right-clicking on it because I want this torpedo bomber to land first so I can prep the TV around. Uh, as soon as this guy dies, it's probably the plane spotting us, so we want to get rid of that spotter plane. That's why we're seen. So we'll get rid of him. Now, while all this is going on, this stray hipper is theoretically being uh, attacked by the enemy carrier, but you think the crews will be able to defend themselves. We could, as soon as this... Wow, it's a really tanky spotter plane. I mean, I could fly away and I could strafe it. would be the much easier idea. I could boom, great. So now we'll fly over here and we'll defend our hipper. We'll get our torpedo bombers up. Good, Turpitz dies. Now it's just the Amagi. It's not the greatest Saipan game in the world, but it's enough. It's, it's, it's air control. Our team didn't necessarily play overly bad. We got some saves. We did a little bit of damage. We can, we've, we've had more in the past. And now we can go after the Amagi. Now the great thing about the tier 9 bombers is if you, if you have the right approach and you come at a target the right way, longer ships like tier 9s, like Friedrich Grosses and, and that type of stuff, or Yamatos, you can still strike them. Uh, you wouldn't come across a tier 10, obviously. But you, you, the tier, the longer tier 9s, the, the Azumos, possibly the Numasashi that's going to come out, Saipan's going to love them in the torpedo setup because it's not going to have any problems whatsoever at slamming them. Now, I think I'll only drop one wave in this guy because I'm fairly certain he's going to die before I even drop. And I pulled him away so I could reverse drop, otherwise he would have looped around there. So rather than going like that, I pulled him up to give him some more distance between the plane and the kind of the edge reticle. There you go. Split these up just in case he tries to strafe me, because I just saw that on the minimap. He doesn't. Clip him. Straight. Exit. Boom. There's no point even clicking him, because if, if I do the exit strafe maneuver, boom. Kills the planes outright. Try and keep up. 
15 and we'll move up. He's also pretty beat up, so one torpedo one wave might be enough. Now, it's possible that you might come across a ranger captain that's got a good set of AA skills on the captain, not just the base 11 captain skills. Uh, and in that case, if you click on these planes and you turn around, so the best thing he could do is turn around and have his tail on, so I'd have to go around him to drop. Uh, he could kill off enough planes to survive the strike, but he's, he's pretty heavily on fire, so that's, that's not going to happen. So let's see, he's gone. Cool. Now... We didn't kill the ranger there at the beginning because we, it would have taken two strikes. So instead we went after uh, targets of opportunity, we went after Nagato in the north, we went after New Mexico in the center, we beat them up, we wounded them, maybe sometimes we caused some floodings, it meant other ships could kind of finish them off. Alternatively, we could go after targets that have low health, for example like that Turpitz, even though he barely survived. That's mainly because one of our waves was already vulnerable down to two rather than three and then we could have maybe got two torps on them. So it's, it's powerful and it doesn't care about being up tiering. The Saipan is, I feel, much more new player friendly. Uh, I say new player friendly than other carriers. You really should be learning on the four, the fives, and the sixes first. But if you want to play a CV, Saipan is more friendly when he gets up tiered, more friendly with the higher tier planes getting from where you need to be if you're caught out of position with your planes. And it's more generous with the, the gimmick of the exit strafing in, exit strafing out, without losing a plane, lots of ammunition, and having lots of plane reserve waves, so you've got like four or five waves rather than the three of the other tier sevens. So it's, it's, it's a very much, a, I find, an easier ship to play. And by, I guess you could say there's a skill floor and there's a skill ceiling. So on other carriers, the skill floor is much higher. The skill floor on the Saipan is still really low compared to the other ships. However, the skill ceiling, maximizing the torpedo bomber drops, maximizing the fighter, you know, positioning, all that type of stuff, is really, really high. It's as high as the other carriers. Uh, but the, the skill floor is much more friendly to new people coming in. So if you're looking for a premium carrier to play, while the Kaga offers massive strike potential, I think the Saipan is probably better than either the Kaga or the Enterprise for a person coming in to play the game and, and learning the mechanics. Anyway, that ends today's video on the Saipan. Um, there's like 100 million topics that we could talk about carriers and tier 7s. So what if I play this scenario? What if I play against that scenario? So if you've got questions, put them down in the comments and I'll try and answer them as best I can. Coming up next will be the Enterprise. Um, in our series and then we'll maybe talk about the Graf Zeppelin, but it's not really finished It's kind of pointless at the moment. We could talk about the woes of it, but otherwise. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time. Goodbye